Welcome to the LDN Radio Show, brought to you by the LDN Research Trust. I'm your host, Linda Elsigood. I have an exciting lineup of guest speakers who are LDN experts in their field. We will be discussing low dose naltrexone and its many uses in autoimmune diseases, cancers, etc. Thank you for joining us. Then I'd like to welcome our guest, pharmacist Suzanne Rosenberg from Community Compounding Pharmacy in uh, Oregon. Thank you for joining us today, Suzanne. Thanks for having me, Linda. So could you tell us what made you decide to become a pharmacist? Well, initially, when I was in undergraduate school at Temple University in Philadelphia, which is my hometown, I uh, worked at a pharmacy and I loved it. I loved working with people. Um, I just loved everything about it. And so when I graduated with my degree in psychology, I applied to Northeastern University in Boston, Massachusetts, and started pharmacy school two months later. And Mm -hmm. that's where I got my uh, pharmacy degree from Northeastern. Okay. So have you always stayed in the Oregon area? So I left after I graduated pharmacy school, I got in my car and drove to Portland, Oregon to visit some friends and never left. And that was 27 years ago. So I've been practicing as a pharmacist exclusively in the Portland, Oregon area. Yes. Wow. That's amazing. So could you tell us, you know, when did you buy the pharmacy? Well, I moved to Portland and I, uh, got really interested. I worked for small independent pharmacies and I got really interested in herbal medicine. Um, And so when there was a company called Wild Oats that opened a a large kind of flagship store and they had a really cool idea where they put a pharmacy with a naturopathic medicinary in this grocery store with a yoga studio and they asked me to manage it. So for six and a half years, I managed this pharmacy and turned it into a compounding pharmacy. Uh, Then another local chain recruited me and I did that for four and a half years. And then I decided, you know, I have all these ideas of things that I wanted to do. And so 15 years ago, I started Community Compounding Pharmacy um, in Lake Oswego, which is a suburb of Portland. And it's a compounding only pharmacy. My phone is going off, pardon me. And um, it's a compounding Uh, only pharmacy. And we predominantly work with integrative practitioners, which I've been working with integrative practitioners for over 23 years now. So naturopaths, functional medicine doctors, integrative practitioners, uh, really all over the West Coast. We started mainly in Portland in the Northwest, but now we pretty much uh, work with integrative practitioners up and down the West Coast. Mm -hmm. So Tell us about your pharmacy. How big is it? You know, do you do sterile, (laughs) non-sterile? So we are fortunate in that we only do non-sterile compounding. So we're about 10,000 square feet. Uh, We have about 45 employees. um, And uh, we're open um, six days a week. And we ship all over the nation, predominantly on the West Coast and certain states um, on the East Coast as well. Um, But mostly on the West Coast, Colorado, Arizona, uh, Alaska, uh, Hawaii, and on the East Coast, uh, New York, um, Massachusetts, no, not Massachusetts, Maine, Vermont, Connecticut. So we are pretty much licensed mainly on the East and the West Coast. And um, we have been um, fortunate to have an extremely amazing staff. Uh, that really supports our uh, patients and our doctors. And one of our focuses at Community Compounding is education. Um, If you go to our website, what you'll find is that we really focus a lot on education. And we do that in two ways. One is we actually offer continuing education twice a year for the naturopathic community, although nurse practitioners as well are, um, are able to get the CEs. So we actually just had one on Saturday. Um, And LDN was a big topic uh, because it is for most ailments. One of our topics uh, was pans and pandas, which is um, predominantly a childhood situation where um, they get uh, inflammation. But 
LDN is a treatment for that. And so one of our doctors, Dr. Sarah McAllister, spoke uh, on Saturday at this conference and brought up LDN. In addition to that, we also uh, make it a priority to offer education for our patients. So patients have access to our pharmacists. We have uh, four pharmacists on staff each day. And so one of the things that we really pride ourselves on is making sure that if a patient calls and has a question, that their questions are answered in real time. In addition to that, every prescription before it goes out gets a personal phone call from one of our pharmacists to counsel them and make sure that they understand what this medication is used for, how to properly take it, and just ask any questions that they may have before that prescription goes out to them. That's good. Um, education is key, you know. And I would say pharmacists, even though you're busy people, have more time to do the research than doctors do. You know, you are the people that educate the doctors and do the hand-holding and explaining to the doctors, you know, they're not experts in drug interactions. That's the the job of the pharmacist. And we find Absolutely. the pharmacies that spend the time on educating their doctors help so many patients because you get a new doctor on board how many patients does that new doctor prescribe LDN for? And then that doctor meets up with other doctor friends and they invariably end up talking about problem cases and then LDN comes up. And it's easier then for the pharmacist who deals with that doctor to mention LDN because a light bulb moment. Well, I was talking to a colleague who talked about LDN, but I don't know much about it. I don't know how to prescribe it. And Without the pharmacists being so well educated themselves in LDN, they wouldn't be able to um, convert the doctors into LDN prescribers. Yeah. So, I mean, what it's not you hard to convert in Oregon? In Oregon, there's, you know, Oregon is kind of one of the meccas of alternative medicine, and so. In Portland uh, and in Oregon in general, um, we have a lot of information. We have a really tight integrative community here and it's really neat to see. And they they teach each other, they're supportive of each other. It's a really neat place. I feel very fortunate that I get to practice in Portland, Oregon and in, in the Northwest. It's a really special place, especially as an integrative pharmacist. My entire pharmacy, just so you know, is an integrative pharmacy. So our model is different than some of the other compounding pharmacies in the city who I have a ton of respect for. Ours is different in the sense that uh, a lot of the other compounding pharmacies will market to um, doctors who maybe are more focused on allopathic. And we do work with allopathic practitioners. We are the main compounding pharmacy for OHSU when with with their all their LDN, so all of their uh, LDN from Oregon Health and Science University, or at least most of it, they have a tight relationship with us. Um, but our model is different in the sense that we really only market and uh, seek to educate alternative practitioners at this point. And um, one of the things that we do is we are licensed all over the nation and I personally will travel and then I have another woman, Holly, who also helps me. And we meet with naturopaths, functional medicine doctors, integrative practitioners, doctors who are interested in learning alternate ways of treatment. And so what we see our role as is, is to go out throughout the nation and meet with these doctors. That's really our focus. So we work with doctors all over the nation and we actually will travel and we do what we call a lunch and learn. And at our website, you can actually go onto our website and uh, there's a doctor portal on there. And in that doctor portal, you can actually request a lunch and learn. And so we go and we sit and we meet with these doctors and we go over integrative uh, products that we have. A lot of them um, will have never heard of these formulas because because we work so closely with the integrative practitioner group in the Northwest, we're actually created formulas, including using LDN. We've been using a lot of LDN topically at community compounding. 
we have a formula now that we're really proud of that is a, a topical LDN for lichen sclerosis with some herbs in it, as well as some uh, hormones. Um, we also use LDN topically when it comes to psoriasis and eczema. Um, we use that in conjunction with a product called ketodafin, which is a mast cell stabilizer. And so what we do is we use LDN orally, but we've also been utilizing a lot in our topical preparations. Um, and we use a lot of integrative treatments for hair loss, uh, skin conditions, uh, gut, gut health, um, and we'll in take different products and combine them for these uh, new products that a lot of doctors haven't heard of because they're, they're predominantly products that we've created with doctors in the Northwest. And so it's really neat to go out and share these products with our doctors. And all of this stuff actually is available in this doctor portal. So in the doctor portal, if you go to this doctor portal on our website, which if you just type in community compounding pharmacy, you'll find it. Um, there's a doctor portal in there. And what you have to do is you have to uh, ask for access. And then my assistant will send you a code within 24 hours, business hours, of course. And then you'll have access to all of our prescription pads, all of our research articles that we have in there, um, recommendations for treatments. I have a little um, pamphlet in there that was a talk that I had done uh, in January in Hawaii for some naturopaths. And what it is, is it's a little pamphlet of our top 20 formulas that our pharmacists love. And not all of them are things that we do every day, but they're things that patients have come back to us and said, wow, this really works. Or a doctor says, that formula is amazing. I'm, and they start telling their, their, their colleagues. So that's a new thing that we just came out with a couple months ago, and it was kind of serendipitous. We didn't intentionally plan to put this together, but I did it for a talk and handed it out to some doctors and they loved it. So now we have this like top 20 formulas that we wanted to share and we'll be adding to that regularly as things come up. Mm -hmm. So that's a place to get a lot of information on the doctor portal. Well, I have to say, you mentioned Dr. Sarah McAllister and anybody listening, if you put her name in YouTube, you will see that I interviewed her many years ago, maybe even <laughs> as many as 15 years ago, it's a long time. But uh, yes, I have spoken with her, a very nice young lady. Oh, she's amazing. Her talk was amazing, yes. And if anyone's interested in learning more about our talks, you can go online. This one we literally just had on Saturday. So in about two weeks, the lecture will be available. So if you're, if anyone is interested in learning or you know can attend any of our webinars, they're in person and they're also a webinar um, based you're more than welcome to visit our website. Um, you don't need to log into the doctor portal and you can um, get access to these conferences. But I will tell you that we do two conferences a year and I would say at least 50% of the doctors. And we talk about, um, I'm trying to think of some of our other topics. We, well, we do a lot of women's health, um, but we do a lot. We had Ehlers-Danlos, we've had mold, we've had pans and pandas a couple times actually. We had mitochondrial health at uh, this last one. Um, I would say at least 60% of our talks have LDN in those talks because it's so prevalent now in treating so many things. Um, we had, we've done a lot with the gut. We've had a lot of, of gut talks at, at these conferences. Um, another phenomenal naturopath in Portland. Um, but you will see that in a lot of these treatments, LDN is indicated for a, lo a lot of these patients. So it's it's a hot topic, not only, um, you know, in terms of autoimmune, which is kind of what traditionally I would think of it being used for. Um, and now we're seeing it in so many other ways to support our immune system um, that is pretty much in every, com you know, it's definitely at every conference, whether it's at every talk, maybe sometimes women health, not so much, but it, it's a hot topic at our, at our talks. Mm -hmm. And what about chronic pain and opioid addictions and we, we yes. people off of opioids? We have uh, an amazing doctor in Portland who is a naturopath who uh, actually works at the pain clinic at OHSU. She's um, an amazing doctor, amazing naturopath, an amazing human being. Um, and so we work very closely with her. And so, um, you know, she prescribes two things, well, several things through us, but one of the main things she prescribes through us is LDN. 
And she does a lot of our topical pain creams as well. So we also do topical pain creams for patients who are in chronic pain. And the goal is to get them off of their narcotics and switch them over to LDN. And patient, I just had a patient yesterday who, um, actually this was, this was an unusual patient. This was a patient who was not seeing one of these doctors, but has done her own research and is starting on a really low dose of LDN and is working with a doctor who has basically been brought in through the patient request of prescribing LDN. So here's a doctor who knew very little about LDN and here's a patient who's educating their doctor on their own. And these two came together and I was counseling the patient and she was really up on her LDN. There's a lot of information out there. It was really neat to see. And she was telling me, yeah, my doctor doesn't know a lot about it. So she's going to help me, you know, I'm going to, we're going to do this together. And so um, that's an unusual situation, but we see that too. And that was, that was one that stood out to me yesterday. It was a really neat conversation. Mm -hmm. Oh, and women's health. Um, Dr. Phil Boyle has been using LDN in his fertility clinic for 20 plus years now. Yes. Um, yes. With great success. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, he also uses for endometriosis, polycystic ovaries, painful mm -hmm. periods, um, mm -hmm. heavy periods, all these things that women um, have to endure, he's found to be, you know, very, very helpful. We had a, this was also a phone call I had yesterday with a nurse practitioner. Um, so I'm on the phone all day long and so are my pharmacists answer, answering questions, coming up with formulas, um, we had a doctor, a nurse practitioner call me yesterday. Again, someone I've known for gosh, 20 years. And she has a patient who has severe pelvic floor pain. Um, and it's, uh, so what we're doing for her is we're doing a, I'm trying to think exactly what the formula was, but we're doing, um, oh, you know what it is? This particular patient had actually some inflammation is what it was, and it was a burning pain. And so we're actually doing a suppository for her of chrome. It's a mast cell patient. We're doing chromalin and we're doing, she had already been on diphenhydramine and ketodafin, which are uh, anti uh, antihistamines, but we're doing chromalin. We're switching it to chromalin. And I suggested that she add some naltrexone to it. So we'll see what happens. But these are the kind of formulas we're always thinking when we're having a situation where a patient is in pain and we're trying to oh wait and put some lidocaine in there as well. Um, but when a patient is in pain and we're putting things together, naltrexone is always something that I'm starting to incorporate into these products because I'm finding that we're getting great results. I mean, the lichen sclerosis formula has been a huge success for us. And this was a formula that we kind of been playing around with for years, but it contains, uh, we've been working with glyceriza, which is um, licorice root which is a common treatment for lichen sclerosis. It's, there was a product on the market for many years uh, that contained licorice root. And so this new formula that we've created is a combination of estriol, the glyceriza, aloe, and naltrexone and some vitamin E. And it's, an, it's a steroid-free cream. And we have been working and trying to find something that is steroid-free for lichen sclerosis. And this is really the first time that we're getting feedback from our doctors and our patients, our doctors primarily, um, cause you can see it, you know, they try it on one patient and they try it again. And they're calling me and saying, what was that formula that I called in for lichen sclerosis? I need it for this patient. Cause it works so well. That's kind of how we get our feedback. Um, and so we're really excited to have that. And I'm finding that when I'm creating formulas now, I'm thinking a lot more of putting naltrexone in these formulas. Um, even if they're not, you know, for, for other areas of the body, not even just topical, mm -hmm. I mean, not even just oral, excuse me. So for your patients that use it for a dermalo dermatological condition, how long do you normally find it takes before they experience? Um, you know, it's, really that's one of the disadvantages of being a pharmacist, right? It's like we have this, we are really accessible, but we also don't have a lot of patient follow-up. Usually pharmacists hear really ex amazing things or we hear things when there's an issue we don't see get to see patients all the time so it's hard for me to say but i know with uh, i know there's actually a research study uh that pcca did on specifically on um naltrexone in their zematop product 
for eczema. Um, and so that's something that you can actually just Google and it has some um, dates, some time frames there. What we do for our uh, eczema and psoriasis cream is we actually add catodafin to it as well. So it's a combination of naltrexone catodafin in their Zematop product. But typically patients, usually if they don't get results after a month, they usually stop. And most of our patients are getting results within a couple of weeks. Well, I mean, having spoken to lots of patients with skin conditions, they seem to be the the people that take the longest to respond to notice some things. I mean, some of them, you know, it's six months, you know, they stick with it and it takes that long. A lot of these patients are on LDN orally, so they'll be on LDN orally for a while, and then we'll start the cream. So they've already kind of had the advantage of being on LDN. Okay. But one of the things that I did want to share with you guys is that um, one of the things that we decided to do as a compounding pharmacy, uh, especially post-COVID, is our focus was really on becoming efficient. You know, having patients wait for their medications um, we just realized it's no longer an issue, is no longer an option. And we really wanted to make sure that efficiency was um, a priority at community compounding. And so one of the things that we did, um, because we deal with, we work very closely with the mast cell activation community in the Northwest. Um, and because we work with so many of these patients, um, we decided to start finding ways to have our turnaround time shortened. And also uh, we really value our employees and we really, and you know, making large batches of capsules is actually physically challenging. It's a lot of work. So um, one of the things that we decided to do about six months ago is we decided to invest in a tablet press. And we are now pressing two drugs at community compounding, one of them being naltrexone. So we're one of the few compounding pharmacies in the United States that is making naltrexone tablets. Our naltrexone tablets are a little different from some of the other compounding pharmacies. Because we work so closely with the mast cell activation community, it's, we're very aware of allergens and food sensitivities and you know, potential allergens for these patients. So a lot of, usually when you make a tablet, you have to put a binder in there and a binder is something that holds it together. And most binders are pretty inert unless you have mast cell activation or severe allergens. These patients can tolerate many things, including things that you and I could tolerate easily. So what we decided to do is we decided to not use any binders in our tablets. Our tablets only contain two ingredients. They contain a cellulose that we specifically use a cellulose that is GMO-free, allergen-free, it's actually kosher, and it's made from organic materials. And the only other ingredient in our product is the drug. So it's this GMO organic material cellulose called flow cell and naltrexone. So if a patient is a vegan, if a patient is allergic to silicone dioxide, which is a very common thing used for most tablets, um, there's no issues with taking this these tablets. But the best part, one of the best parts about these tablets is that they are scored. So what happens with these tablets is they can be cut really easily. As you know, most compounding pharmacies, including us, make naltrexone capsules, which are great. And we've been making them for you know, 15 years. Um, however, with these, you know, capsules can't be uh, accurately split. You can open one up and kind of guesstimate, which, you know, we don't typically recommend as a pharmacist, but it can be done. But with these tablets, with a pill cutter, and we do recommend using a pill cutter because we use no binders, we actually press them really hard. So they're hard, just know that. Um, and so we do uh, counsel all of our patients that they they will need a pill cutter and they can cut them right down the center so they know that they are getting 50% of that, of that tablet. So as an example, we only make three strengths. We don't make a 1.5 because we make a one, a three, and a 4.5.
the one we make because because we have so many patients who are super sensitive to medications, a lot of our patients will start on the 0.5 dose. It's not the most common, but it's definitely common enough that it was something that we wanted to be able to offer this option. So with the one milligram tablet, you would the patients who are super sensitive will cut that in half and start with a 0.5 and ramp up slowly to the desired 4.5 milligram dose or, what, or three milligram wherever they land. Um, the three milligram tablet we made because that can be cut in half and they start with the 1.5 milligram tab, half of that, which is the 1.5, half of the three and slowly ramp up to the 4.5. And then we do the 4.5 as the maintenance dose. But what's really nice about it is that this saves patients a significant amount of money when they're using these tablets. Because as I'm sure you guys know, if any of you work with compounding pharmacies, and if you're listening to this, you do, compounding pharmacies are very labor intensive. So anytime that you can decrease labor at, in a compounding pharmacy, what you're doing is you're significantly decreasing the labor dollars. And so we can, the goal is to be able to save the patient's money. And the only way to do that as a compounding pharmacy is to decrease labor. And what really is cool about it is that we have the same staff that we had here a year ago, but people are working better, not harder now. Now we have an R&D team, which is a research and development team that helps us when we have new products that we want to create. And there's an issue with something. If we want to bring in a new base and we want to play with it, we have an entire team now who works on all of these products. We have an IT team now. We just came up with a new IT team where my staff uh, each department has their own IT specialist. But the point that I'm trying to make is that as a result of the tablet machine and other ways that we've become more efficient, we're actually a better compounding pharmacy now, and we're actually offering better customer service than ever. And our turnaround time is now one to two business days. And, so, and it gives me more time to go out and meet with doctors and educate and network and learn. It's just been, the tablets are great for so many reasons, for the patients, for the pharmacy and for our ability to educate and really reach out to more people. So we're really excited about these tablets and they've been a huge success for us. Um, and they've really been a great relationship builder too. We've been able, doctors are like, oh, you know, I may use my local pharmacy for my estriol vaginal cream, but I'm gonna use community compounding for my tablets. And then we create these relationships and now they have more pharmacies to network with if they have issues that come up with their patients. Maybe their compounding pharmacy doesn't carry a product that we carry, which happens often. You know, some things are expensive to carry. And so it just creates all these new networks. And we work with other compounding pharmacies and share formulas. And it's just been a really nice way to network with doctors and, and our patients. I'm going to have to stop you there. We've run out of time, but it's amazing. So just tell people your website so that they can go and find out more about you. Okay, absolutely. So it's community, C as in cat, M as in Mary, P as in Paul, D as in David, short for compound, uh, dot com, or you can just type in community compounding pharmacy in Oregon and you'll find us. And again, I just wanted to remind you that we're licensed. I may not have mentioned all the states, but the whole West Coast, most of the East Coast, um, we are licensed in. So if you guys are in any of those areas and want to learn more about what we do, don't hesitate to give us a call. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Linda. Any questions or comments you may have, please email me, linda, L-I-N-D-A, at ldnrt.org. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciated your company. Until next time, stay safe and keep well.